Hello everyone, uh, this is Grant Monning. I'm here to give this week's presentation on the life of Marcella as written by St. Jerome. So before we can dive into the life of Marcella herself, we need to know a little bit about the background of her, the author of her life. Jerome uh, was born in the year 340 AD and died in 420 AD, and it's pretty safe to say he was one of the more well-known figures of the Western Church uh, during the 4th and early 5th centuries. Jerome was an ascetic and scholar who uh, spent all spent his life all over different various parts of the empire. He was born in modern day Croatia, uh, studied in Rome, spent time living up in Trier in Germany, a uh, city in northern Italy, and then went to Antioch in Syria, where he would withdraw into the desert for a period of a cup of two years to embark on a life of extreme asceticism and uh, study of scripture. But it was so extreme that he ended up not being able to handle such a life and eventually made his way back to Constantinople, where he was ordained a priest, and then uh, made his way to Rome, where he assisted Pope Damasus uh, around the year 383. And that's where he got to know a number of uh, women who were seeking to live an uh, ascetical lifestyle uh, dedicated to Christ in the capital of Rome, or in the city of Rome, I should say, at that time, uh, including Marcella. However, as I'll relate in a little bit, Jerome uh, kind of courted controversy wherever he went. And so after a period of three years, he had to withdraw to Jeru uh, Bethlehem, where he established a monastery in 386 and spent the rest of his days uh, living there writing. So as I mentioned, he was very much known for his asceticism and his scholarship. Jerome is probably most famous for uh, translating the Bible from its original Hebrew and Greek into the Latin Vulgate, which became the standard uh, translation of the Bible for much of European history, uh, and uh, still is the basis of the uh, readings we use uh, at Mass today. He was somewhat unusual in that he had extensive correspondence with women uh, seeking the ascetical life in Rome, you know, such as Marcella, um, Paula, you. Uh, can't pronounce her name, Eustochium. Uh, and these is somewhat unusual for a man of his time that so many of his letters on such spiritual topics are addressed directly to women. It's kind of interesting. Um, Jerome was involved in numerous church controversies, which is almost an understatement. If there was a theological dispute or church argument during this period of the 4th and 5th centuries, you can better believe Jerome was involved in some way, uh, often with quite colorful language. And then finally, uh, something important to keep in mind as a background of when reading the life of Marcella is that Jerome had an extremely high view of virginity as compared to marriage. How I, you might ask? He was once attacked of um, thinking that marriage was evil, to which she replied in writing that he did praise marriage, praise marriage, but only because it gave him more virgins. Uh Finally, we need to know about one more historical event before we can dive into the life of Marcella, and that's uh, the sack of Rome in the year 410 AD. Now, by this point, Rome was no longer the capital of the empire. It had been split into eastern and western halves, and Rome was no longer even the capital of the Roman half of the empire, or the western part of the empire, excuse me. Um, but it was still the spiritual and cultural home for everyone who called themselves a Roman, and it hadn't been attacked in over 800 years. That changed in 410 when the Visigoths, the Germanic people from the north, uh, were led by their king uh, Alaric to absolutely ransack and pillage the city, destroying many of its classical structures and just causing all kinds of devastation. And Marcella herself was caught up in these attacks, and uh, we'll hear about her actions during the attacks a little bit later. And it's possible that this attack was what somewhat motivated Jerome to write his letter on the life of Marcella. Okay, so let's get into the life of Marcella herself. The letter uh, by Jerome is written to Principia, uh, a, a companion of Marcella's uh, who imitated and followed her lifestyle. And it's organized into three main thematic sections. The first is uh, Marcella's life of poverty, chastity, and study. Um, we're told that Marcella was born in the year 325 in Rome, where she would spend her entire life and uh, she was from a very wealthy aristocratic family, and as was common in those days, she married at a young age, 
Um, unfortunately, only after seven months of marriage, her husband uh, died. And this is where Marcella's life takes kind of a dramatic turn. Uh, even though we are told she is quite ex exceedingly beautiful, and as I mentioned, uh, from a very powerful, aristocratic, well-known family, uh, she re refuses to be wed again, uh, rejecting numerous suitors in the choice of, instead of becoming uh, a woman totally de dedicated to Christ uh, and embracing a, a life of austere poverty and the study of Scripture. Where Marcella got this inspiration might have come from uh, the East, as we're told, that, told by Jerome that uh, during the 4th century, uh, Bishop Athanasius of Alexandria, who we know, who we know as St. Athanasius, the, de the defender of Nicene Orthodoxy, had to flee his see to Rome because of persecution by Arian heretics. And it was there in Rome that he would meet Marcella and uh, told her the stories of monks of the desert, such as Antony and Pacomius and all the desert mothers and fathers. And this seems to have inspired uh, Marcella to adopt a life of the monks in the desert, but within the, wall, city, in the city walls of Rome. And Jerome is uh, effusive with his praise of Marcella, of her true dedication to uh, real poverty, her service to the poor, uh, and also just beyond her simple living, her immense knowledge in, of the scriptures. Jerome cannot give her enough praise for her knowledge of uh, the Psalms and studying scriptures to know them and pray them. And uh, it comes across as quite affectionate that he has for her understanding of the word of God. And it's this love of scripture that Marcella had that kind of leads into the second thematic uh, section of the letter, which is Marcella's refutation of heretics. We're told by Jerome that uh, out in the provinces of the empire, uh, a, a heresy springs up like wildfire and eventually makes its way to Rome. He doesn't outright say what this heresy is, uh, but from clues in its letter, it, it seems pretty obvious that he was referring to uh, the debate over whether the theology of uh, origin was orthodox or not. And this is a debate that Jerome himself was very involved in. So it's not so super surprising to see it appear in his letter. Uh, but what is surprising is how much praise he gives for Marcella and her role of defeating uh, the heresy within Rome. We're told by Jerome that Marcella, you know, confronts the heretics uh, in their errors of interpreting scripture, um, instigates, really pushes the church to crack down on these heretics, um, reconciles those who have been away from the faith by showing their error with her own knowledge of scripture, and uh, it's really a, kind of a cool countercultural witness because in other parts of his letter, Jerome can sound very patriarchal and saying women should not teach and be obedient to men. But he sees nothing but praiseworthiness in Marcella's attempts to refute the heresies and defend the orthodoxy of the faith uh, of the church in Rome. Um, and finally, the third section of the letter is Marcel deals with Marcella's steadfastness during the sack of Rome uh, by the Visigoths. Um, Jerome kind of phrases it in his letter that as a result of this heresy that uh, God allows the, the scourge of the Goths to attack Rome. Um, and in the course of their uh, ransack of the city, we're told that uh, Goths burst, burst into the residence of Marcella and her young companion Principia, and uh, they uh, knew that Marcella was from an aristocratic family, and so they demanded to know where her valuables and money and possessions were. And when she insisted to them that she had voluntarily chosen a life of uh, asceticism, uh, her attackers did not believe her and beat her with uh, whips and clubs, but she refused to break, only pleading with them, the men, to uh, spare her uh, companion, Principia, to not let her be carried away as a, a slave or something like that. And it seems through her prayers and efforts that Marcella eventually wins over her attackers who uh, escort her and Principia um, to one of the few places that were spared in the attack of the city, the Basilica of St. Paul, uh, where the two wrote out the rest of the uh, uh, 
rest of the attack. Um, shortly afterwards, uh, in the year 410, several months after the actual attack, uh, Marcella, probably as a result of the injuries she received in this attack, um, died in Principia's arms. And Jerome kind of ends the letter abruptly, saying that uh, he knows that there is a better reward waiting for Marcella. So that's the life of Marcella. What are some interesting points that I took away uh, from reading her life? The first one is uh, that really shone through for me was Jerome's utmost respect for Marcella and how really countercultural his respect is. As I mentioned before, Jerome's letter can sound a very much at times patriarchal and dismissive of women, but it's just amazing to see how much praise he heaps upon Marcella for her life, her love of scripture, and her dedication to poverty. And so I think that's really cool that uh, Marcella's life was so overflowing with holiness that it kind of overcame Jerome's own cultural standpoints to recognize uh, the effect that this woman had upon the church, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, the second point that I really took away from is just how groundbreaking Marcella's life was. I mean, she's a contemporary of Antony uh, in the East about the same time period. And so there weren't many monks in the West that were men, let alone women. And she kind of sets the standard for uh, female monasticism with her <clears throat> extreme dedication to asceticism, being a defender of the faith uh, in her study of scripture, and being a monk in the system of a martyr as a witness to the faith by refusing uh, to break when under assault by the Visigoths in the attack. And I think that really leads to my third point is how groundbreaking Marcella's life was uh, served as an inspiration for numerous other women to kind of ad adapt the ascetical uh, lifestyle. Uh, Jerome, you know, mentions obviously Principia and women such as Paula and Eustochium. We're all kind of inspired by Marcella's uh, dedication and uh, apparently they grew to such a, a, a large movement that, uh, as Jerome writes in his letter, transformed Jerusalem, or sorry, transformed Rome into a Jerusalem of monks, we are told, of women who are willing to dedicate their lives to Christ. And so I think it's kind of cool to see Marcella, how her life and the description of her life as Jerome uh, ended up being such an inspiration for the, the growth of female monasticism that uh, would, would uh, grow in tandem with male monasticism uh, in the church as it went forward uh, in the years. So there's my presentation on Marcella. I hope it uh, made sense, and I look forward to seeing uh, your responses throughout the week. Thank you.